I wanted to talk a bit about Mercedes slash Gila vacuum door lock actuator motor control. In front of me is a vacuum control motor board out of a 1984 Mercedes 380 SE. I'm sure these modules were similar across most cars from the early 80s, maybe even late 80s. So this board is comprised of a vacuum sensor, which is the largest component on here. This has two contacts here and um, vacuum is drawn on here. There's a diaphragm. I think these diaphragms go bad sometimes, but uh, mine was fine. Then you've got a relay here for one direction, one relay for another. This is for a door opening, I believe, and then this is for the locks. So this just reverses the polarity of the motor and the pump. Um, but we're not going to talk about the motor. It's a completely different topic. Um, then here we've got a capacitor, capacitor, two capacitors here and two capacitors here. I went ahead and replaced all of these. Now, the initial reason I took this apart was because the motor seized because the car was standing for a while and due to a rear end collision, there was some moisture in the trunk getting in from a hole created on the uh, fender. It was bought in a year ago for like 17, the ho a house for $17,000 because I'm looking at the property, so I'll get, pick up two, two lots. The lot is 30 feet wide, and, you know, maybe if the, if, if the guy hasn't worked on So, anyway, that moisture caused the motor to seize completely and rust up, and it caused a lot of corrosion, as you can see around here. Um, so, what I really want to talk about is how I repaired this. So, what would happen was, uh, even after I replaced all the capacitors, this would be fine, it would have its normal timeout, and this one would click on and click off immediately. So there was, there, there, it was just canceling itself. Now it should be canceled by the movement of this here as it draws vacuum that should kick this off or kick that off and then, you know, it blows and kicks that off or whatever. Um, but it wasn't doing that, it was just going on, off, on for a moment and then off. So. I went around and I tested all these transistors, tested all these diodes, everything checked out fine, as it should have, um, and these should have checked out fine too, but the one that was here, and I have it right here, um, I apologize for the very shallow depth of field, but it's very, very rusty. So uh, I went and ordered some new ones, uh, about six of them. They're about 53 cents, I believe, um, depending on the vendor you go to, it's around that. Um, super, super cheap. So I replaced that and there's some diodes on here that go into, so it's a little tough getting this one into the hole. This one doesn't need those diodes. But that one in, and now this one goes on, it cancels, and then that one goes on and it cancels. Now these do two things. I don't know which is which, I'm not an engineer, but um, one of these will click on when one of these pins over here gets power from the switch inside the driver's door and then either this will cancel that or there's a timeout but the timeout I'm assuming is regulated by some of these capacitors because I don't see any timer digital circuitry on here but again I'm an engineer I have no idea um, so let me show you how it works I know Ken Bergsman has done a similar description, but he didn't even dare take the thing apart. So uh, this is the, the guts of it working without the motor. So uh, here we are. Um, and now I'm gonna to touch one of these three contacts. I've got the ground already hooked up. I've got 12 volts. Here we go. Oh, the stupid clip came off. Technical difficulty, one of my alligator clips came off my power supply, but uh, we're back in business now. So I'm going to touch this contact right here. You should see this relay go, if I remember correctly. Oh. Oh. Oh, there you go. See, it's on. And now I'm going to cancel it with this. Mock the vacuum. Boom, it's off. And now this won't go on again because it's locked itself like that so it knows that the doors have been unlocked so it's even if though that switch is still pressed and this is still getting 12 volts which it will be in the car it will still be getting 12 volts from that switch it's not going to run the motor um 
So now you go to lock the doors. You, let's say if, you know you just parked your car and you lock the doors. Boom, that relay clicks. And then when it gets enough vacuum, oh here. So something very interesting. Um, I think I actually reversed the polarity with these when I was explaining it. So this is actually locking and this is unlocking. So um, yeah, so that's what this corresponds with. So there are two contacts down here. They're not worth showing. It's super simple. Um, it just rocks back and forth like that and it rests in there. So that's the operation of this unit. Pretty simple, um, but there's more that meets the eye. And honestly, if you're going out and spending whatever it is, $150, $200 for a new unit, you should really try to attempt to repair it because then you get to understand how it works and you're gonna save a lot of money. This was about 50 cents. Um, all these capacitors together, I don't know, maybe 50 cents also, maybe a dollar? I don't, I don't really know. It, this, this whole repair definitely costs under three bucks. Um, and yes, it's time, but uh, the, now I have a perfectly good working unit that's insured for uh, maybe another 30 years. So let's see how long this one lasts. I thought it was only right to give a demonstration of this before I ended the video. So I've already tested this on the car and it works fabulously. Um, I have the motor hooked up and everything. And for demonstration purposes, I have a long piece of silicone hose actually going into the outlet and inlet on the housing. I do actually have to replace the original piece of hosing in there because it was leaking and it was blowing off for the unlock feature. So without further ado, let's put some power to this and see what happens. Oh. Now it's just gonna run like that until I block this hole here and I can actually just put a cap on it. Give me one second. There we go. Hopefully it doesn't blow off. And three, two, one. Boom. That's as quick as it should be. Do you see the little actuator going? I love electromechanical stuff. It's pretty big arcs on those relays. Dangerous. Maybe you can't see the arcs on camera, but... It's pretty cool for the 80s. So I'm gonna put this thing back together and set up in my car, put the new silicone vacuum hose on, and I'm good to go for another 35 years of locking and unlocking my doors, hopefully. Thanks for watching.